Flat roofs can be insulated successfully using a variety of insulation products and strategies. Apart from the energy efficiency benefits, specifying the right type of insulation and locating the insulation in the right location within the flat roof assembly is critical to preventing moisture-related issues such as condensation, mold growth, and structural damage from rot. Moisture accumulation within the roof assembly can compromise its integrity and lead to costly repairs or premature replacement. In this video, we're talking about five different strategies that you can use to insulate your flat roof assembly. This is the most common strategy that we tend to use when we go to design a flat roof assembly. We have our rigid insulation installed completely above the surface of the roof deck in multiple thick layers, and at the top we have a layer of tapered rigid insulation to provide the slope to the roof. Now we get a lot of performance and durability benefits by locating all of the insulation outboard of the decking, whether we're framing out of wood or out of steel. By locating the insulation outboard, we are preventing condensation from forming on the underside of the deck from that warm, moisture-laden interior air passing through or diffusing into the roof assembly. So that rigid insulation is warming the condensing surface and keeping it essentially at the same temperature and humidity as the interior condition space. If we're insulating a metal roof deck, we have to insulate above the metal deck completely because the conductivity of the metal deck is significant enough to impact the thermal resistance of the assembly. We also don't have any thermal bridging through the roof deck, except at maybe fastener penetrations, as that rigid insulation serves as a robust thermal break between the interior condition space and the exterior environmental conditions. So this is a very high performance, energy efficient assembly. We are also able to run our mechanicals within the rafter or truss bays. Now there are some important things to note. We absolutely must have an air and vapor control layer between the decking and the rigid insulation layers. While the rigid insulation warms the condensing surface of the deck and eliminates the potential for condensation, that warm moist air can still pass through the joints of the decking and the rigid insulation from air leakage, and it ends up in the upper parts of the assembly and condenses on the roof membrane. We can't dry through the roof membrane because it's impermeable. We need an additional airtight vapor retarder at the level of the roof deck to prevent that warm moist air from migrating up into the assembly and causing moisture damage that could result in a loss of bonding strength at the membrane. Now in terms of rigid insulation, we can use almost any rigid insulation product that we want, as long as it meets the minimum compression standards of the loading conditions required. We can use polyisocyanurate, which is the most common type of rigid insulation for a flat roof assembly, or we could use EPS, GPS, or XPS. We could also use rigid mineral wool or rigid wood fiber if we wanted to avoid foam-based products. So there are a lot of options at our disposal. Here in this detail, we have polyisocyanurate or polyiso, which has a very high R value per inch. However, if we wanted to specify rigid mineral wool or expanded polystyrene, we would need at least 12 or more inches to meet R49, which is code in most locations outside of warm climates. Moving on to our second strategy here, we have a hybrid roof assembly that combines the rigid insulation that we used in the previous detail with cavity insulation in the form of bat insulation or netted blown-in insulation installed between the rafter or truss cavities. The strategy is most common on single-family residential projects, not so much on multi-family or commercial buildings, but it does provide some benefits. For one, we don't need nearly as much rigid insulation to be installed outboard of the decking in many cases, which reduces the thickness of the roof buildup and the cost of the rigid insulation. However, this is highly dependent on the climate zone you're building in. Now, with this assembly, we have to follow some rules when it comes to the amount of rigid insulation installed above the roof deck. We still have to prevent warm, moist air from the interior condensing on the underside of the decking and causing a moisture problem. The amount of insulation that we need to install outboard is dependent on the total R value of the roof assembly, the climate zone that you're building in, and the R value of the rigid insulation that you're specifying. So in colder climates, you'll need a higher ratio of rigid rigid insulation to be installed outboard, while in warmer climates you really don't need that much to prevent condensation, especially with a lot of inward vapor drive. So sometimes it makes more sense to use all rigid insulation, like in those colder climates, and sometimes it makes more sense to use this hybrid assembly, like in those warm and temperate climates. Now, the strategy eliminates the incidental surface cavity provided by the framing, so because we're filling in the space with insulation, we have to build either a dropped ceiling or a soffit below to run our HVAC ductwork and branch lines. So there are some negative aspects of this assembly. The strategy also can't be used with steel framing because the steel is too conductive and will impact the thermal performance and moisture dynamics of the assembly by insulating between the framing members. We want to make sure that we are providing a complete thermal break above the steel components. Like our previous
this assembly, we still need an air and vapor retarder to be installed between the rigid insulation and the roof deck to prevent warm, moisture-laden air from migrating into the upper parts of the assembly and getting trapped. And then we have our structural deck, framing, and interior finish like in the previous assembly. The next strategy that we can use is another hybrid option, but instead of installing rigid insulation outboard of the deck, we are applying a continuous layer of closed cell spray foam on the underside of the deck to prevent condensation. Closed cell spray foam provides the benefits of an air barrier, a vapor retarder, and has an excellent thermal resistance at about R7 per inch, and it can insulate hard to reach areas, especially around complex roof geometries, without having to worry about sealing seams and awkward penetrations. We can't use open cell foam because it's too vapor open. Then we're able to install our bat or netted blown-in insulation underneath the spray foam, and that can be any unfaced bat or blown-in insulation of our choosing. Now, just like the rigid insulation solution, we still need to use the right ratios in order to prevent condensation. Condensation can still occur either on the surface of the closed cell spray foam or diffuse through the closed cell foam and condense on the impermeable roof membrane if we don't use enough spray foam. So if we're in a colder climate, we're going to need a higher ratio of closed cell spray foam applied to the underside of the roof deck relative to the R value of the roof assembly, the amount of bat or blown in insulation within the cavity, and the climate zone you're building in. And then we're free to install whatever interior finishes that we want. We're just calling out a standard gypsum board for this detail. Now there are some things you need to be aware of when you are using spray foam as your form of condensation prevention and air control. There is some potential for the spray foam to crack, especially in colder climates where there is a larger temperature difference between the exterior environment and the interior conditioned space. Warm, moist air wants to diffuse into the assembly. We have an impermeable roof membrane here, and a lot of roof membranes are less than 0.1 perms, and closed cell spray foam is around 1 perm for 2 inches and around 0.25 perms for 5 to 6 inches. This may not seem like a lot of a difference, but it's enough to where moisture can diffuse up into the assembly and get trapped here during the cold months. Again, it's not a lot of moisture, but it does increase the moisture content of the sheathing and the framing up here. Then, the heat of the sun drives that moisture back inside. When the wood is saturated, it expands, but when it dries, it contracts. So that means that if there is a rapid expansion and contraction of the framing, the spray foam that's bonded to the framing members can crack, and this negates the effects of the air barrier. So moisture can still leak through via air leakage and condense on the cold sheathing and rot out the decking since it can't dry out easily. So we can get some spray foam failures in cold climates if it's installed on the underside of the roof deck, so it's not a perfect solution by any means. To prevent this from occurring, we have a couple options at our disposal. In this detail, you'll see that we're calling out layers of rigid insulation outboard of the decking and above the spray foam layer, and what this does is it warms up the surface of the deck, keeping it at more consistent temperatures without having these large temperature fluctuations that could result in a crack at the spray foam layer. Additionally, it provides a thermal break to prevent thermal bridging that results in heat loss or heat gain through the roof framing. So this rigid insulation provides a lot of benefits. This isn't the only issue that we run into with spray foam. Though. We're learning that spray foam has a tendency to off-gas chemicals long after it's been installed and even if it's been installed properly. Some of these chemicals are odorless and quite harmful, so we need to be thinking about how we're using spray foam and maybe avoid it in situations where we have sensitive building occupants and even consider moving away from spray foam altogether as a strategy. There are applications where spray foam makes sense and others where you may want to opt for a different option. If you're designing or building a flat roof and don't really know where to start with all these critical decisions, I've laid it all out for you in my climate specific design guides to flat roofs where we cover topics like assembly design to maximize long-term durability and performance, membrane selection and specifications, insulation, cover boards, and so much more. I found that manufacturer's instructions and product data sheets can only get you so far. I really wish something like this existed when I designed my first contemporary home with a flat roof. You can find these guides and the details at asiri-designs.com shop. Links will be in the description below. Now back to the video. Now, if you want to avoid rigid foam and spray foam, this is a completely foam-free assembly. With this strategy, we're using a taped smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent vapor diffusion and air leakage into the roof assembly from the interior and condensing on the roof deck or on the underside of the roof membrane or cover board up here. The smart vapor retarder prevents vapor from migrating upwards, but allows moisture to dry out of the assembly when conditions get wet or humid. And then by taping the smart vapor retarder membrane, we are not only preventing vapor diffusion, but we're preventing air leakage that could transport moisture into the roof assembly. So by providing this membrane, this allows us to insulate the roof assembly with a wider range of air and vapor permeable insulation products like mineral wool, wood fiber, or cellulose insulation. So in this roof assembly, we have tapered rigid mineral wool installed above 
above the roof deck, and bat or blown in insulation installed below the roof deck within the framing cavities. The only reason we have the rigid mineral wall above the roof deck is to slope the roof down to our drainage system, and it also happens to provide some extra fire protection and a thermal break. Then we can insulate the framing cavities with any insulation of our choosing because that smart vapor retarder prevents moisture from getting into this space and condensing. We get a lot of freedom with this assembly. Then installed over the smart vapor retarder, we have 2x3 furring or strapping to provide a service cavity for electrical conduit that won't impact the air barrier, and it helps us to integrate any lighting or ceiling penetrations into that smart vapor retarder. We want to make sure that every single penetration in the membrane for recessed cans or exhaust fans are sealed tightly to that smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent air leakage. And then we have our standard gypsum board for our interior finish. Now, we do run into the same limitations as the previous two hybrid assemblies. We can't run our ductwork within the roof framing since we've eliminated that incidental service cavity. We have to build a soffit or a drop ceiling below the level of the vapor retarder to house our HVAC ductwork and to make sure that we don't have any discontinuities in that thermal control layer and that we don't have any moisture condensing on the ductwork from air leakage where the ducts penetrate the ceiling plane. Additionally, this makes HVAC maintenance significantly easier since the roof assembly won't have to be opened up and potentially compromised. Just like the other hybrid assemblies, this strategy also can't be used with steel framing due to the high conductivity of the steel. However, this strategy is a great option if you want to avoid foam products, and it tends to be more cost effective than purchasing a whole bunch of rigid insulation since we can just use blown-in insulation. Finally, this last strategy that we have here is fairly similar to the first strategy that we talked about. However, instead of using rigid insulation boards, we're specifying high-density closed-cell polyurethane spray foam above the roof deck rather than below the roof deck. And what this does is that it allows for a completely monolithic air, vapor, and thermal control layer above the roof deck in a single product, simplifying the dynamics of the roof assembly quite a bit. The strategy tends to be more common in retrofit applications where we are installing a new roof membrane over an old built-up roof or an old modified bitumen membrane. So the closed cell spray foam is applied directly to the roof deck or to the existing surface. Sometimes you do need a primer and the spray foam is built up with a taper that allows the roof to drain to roof drains or scuppers or gutters. There's no need for an additional air barrier at the roof deck here since this is serving as our air barrier as well. These high-density closed-cell spray foam products are typically around R7 per inch, sometimes higher, which means that you only need about 7 inches of foam to meet R49, which is code in many areas. Now, installing a roof membrane on top of the closed-cell spray foam is a little tricky. We have to use an adhered, fleece-backed, single-ply membrane with a spray urethane adhesive. This is the only type of membrane system that tends to work best in the long term for these spray foam roofs. So, when we're referring to a fleece-backed, single-ply membrane, we're talking about either an EPDM, a TPO or a PVC or a KEE PVC membrane that has a polyester fleece backer bonded to the membrane. And that gets adhered to the cured spray foam layer with a spray urethane adhesive, which gets spattered onto the roof. And then the membrane is rolled onto that after the adhesive has reached its ideal level of tackiness. And that spray urethane adhesive bonds really well to the surface of the closed cell spray foam and to the fleece backer on the underside of the membrane, which absorbs and holds onto that urethane foam. And then we get a really strong adhesive bond to that spray foam layer. We also get a really fast installation with this type of system because we don't have to wait for very long cure times for the adhesive. The spray foam also cures very quickly. We don't have to install an additional air and vapor barrier. We don't have to stack and stagger rigid insulation layers. So there's a lot of benefits to using this type of assembly for retrofits and new construction. As I mentioned before, there are some downsides to using spray foam, particularly the off-gassing that can occur with spray foam products. There are some lower VOC options on the market. However, there can still be some issues with spray foam and lingering odors and off-gassing of harmful odorless chemicals. One way to reduce the effects of this is that if you tape or air seal the roof deck from the spray foam layer, you're not going to have air from the interior coming into contact with the underside of the spray foam layer and circulating those off-gassing chemicals back to the interior. Also, allowing that closed cell spray foam to off-gas as much as possible prior to sealing the roof assembly with the roof membrane will help immensely. For more information on flat roof assemblies, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics from flat roof design to below grade walls to even old mass masonry buildings. Also make sure to pick up one of my climate specific design guides to flat roofs where we break down everything that you need to know before designing and building a flat roof assembly. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.